Daddy, if it's only going to be a little war. Make those stubborn boers take us seriously this time, my darling. When they realize Her Majesty intends to put a stop to their nonsense, they'll quiet down. They'd better. Anyhow, when you get there, you'll stop them, won't you, Daddy? I'll do my best, dear. I'll be back and we'll be together again before you can say knife. I can say knife a good many times in a year. But at the school, you'll have charming little girls to play with, books to read, a pony to ride, and after all, there'll be Emily, you know. Yes, there will be Emily. And she does look as though she'll be an understanding friend, don't you think, Daddy? With that intellectual forehead, I'm sure of it. <laughs> It's not a very cheerful looking school, is it, Daddy? I'm afraid nothing has seemed very cheerful to us at the moment. Well, maybe it'll be better on the inside. Of course it will. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, so sorry. We're all sorry. Get him out. The very idea of delivering a thing like this at the front door. Oh, look, Daddy, my pony. Your employer will answer for this now. Take him away. Yes, far away. Oh, no, Daddy. Oh, I say. Just a moment. You are Miss Minchin? I am. I'm Captain Crewe. I'm afraid I've caused you no end of inconvenience. You most certainly have, Captain Crewe. May I step inside and explain? Come in. Wait here with the pony. Oh, I don't got that. I'm terribly sorry. I had no intention of having the pony delivered inside your house. There are a number of things beside the pony. Parcels have been arriving here collect for your daughter for hours. Follow me, please. You are not aware, Captain Crewe, that I conduct one of the most dignified and exclusive schools in London. Oh, yes, yes, so I understood. That's precisely the reason why I brought my daughter to you. I would not have gathered that from your actions. Really, now, I'm not entirely to blame. You see, Sarah and I have only just arrived from India. Sarah's lived there practically all her life. We'd no more than got here when I learned that my regiment was to leave at once for South Africa, so we had to act hurriedly. But I wrote you, explaining that I do not take young ladies without an interview and the most impeccable references. I wrote you also that at the moment I had no vacant rooms. Well, in that case, Daddy, we might as well move on. This is a bit awkward. You see, your letter never reached me, and I'm afraid it never occurred to me that any school wouldn't welcome my little Sarah. Obviously. If it's a question of my social standing, my father was Sir George Crewe. You've heard of him, perhaps. Oh, naturally. And the best financial references I could give you would be the directors of the South African Holding Syndicate. I'm the principal stockholder in the syndicate. Uh, my brother, Captain Crewe, our professor of elocution and dramatics. Uh, how do you do? Charmed, I'm sure. I see. Isn't the Eclipse Diamond Mines one of your holdings? One of the most important, of course. Of course, of course. I'm sorry to appear casual, Miss Minchin, but the situation is quite distressing. I sailed an hour from the East India docks. I expect you just had to take me to Africa with you, Daddy. Oh, no. And what would a little girl like you do in Africa? Forgive me, Captain Crewe. I fear I've been overzealous. The reputation of my school, you know, one has to be so cautious. But after this interview, I can see at a glance. Such a dear little child. It will be a pleasure to have her with us. Does that mean I've got to stay? Yes, dear. You are to have that privilege. You and your little pony. Such a dear little pony. This is made out of the school. Will it be enough for the moment? Oh, quite. I should say it would. Why, it's stupendous. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but haven't I seen you somewhere before? It's quite possible, my dear Captain. Your face is most familiar. Were you ever on the stage? I seem to associate you with one of the old music halls. <laughs> music halls? My brother on the stage? Ridiculous. Ridiculous indeed. You're quite right. And uh, now, uh, shall we look at little Sarah's rooms? Just a moment, Miss Rose. This is Miss Rose, one of my most capable teachers. Captain Crewe has done us the honor of placing his little daughter, Sarah, with us. How do you do, Miss Rose? How do you do, Captain Crewe? We shall do everything we can to make your little girl happy. I'm sure you will. Children, we have a new pupil, Sarah Crewe. Say how do you do to her. How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Lavinia, Jessie, 
That will do. You may proceed, Miss Rose. Children? She's just like a little princess, isn't she? That's what she is, a princess. And I expect now some people around here won't think they're so smart. Oh, won't they? Wait and see. Princess, indeed. Fortunately, the rooms have just been papered, and the fireplace has an excellent draft. But I thought you didn't have any rooms. But I didn't know then what a dear little girl was coming. But why does that make more rooms, Daddy? <clears throat> Lady Bentley's little daughter has only recently vacated the rooms. Our best suite, of course. Hmm. Do you think you could brighten it up a bit? I'd like it made as gay as possible. I brought a few things from India, but perhaps you could buy whatever else is necessary. With pleasure, Captain Crewe. Yeah. I'd like Sarah to ride every afternoon, if the weather's all right. Of course. Fortunately, we have a splendid riding master. I expect you think I'm completely spoiling the child. And no doubt you're right. But actually, it's good for her. She's much too inclined to bury her little nose in a book and keep it there until someone lures her out of it. You see, Miss Minchin, Sarah has no mother and we've never been separated for more than a few days. How touchy. This is gonna be very hard for her. Have no fear, Captain Crewe. I'm a mother to all my little girls. And now, I'll leave you to your farewells. How much longer have we got, Daddy? Only a few minutes, darling. You're learning me by heart, little Sarah. No, Daddy. I know you by heart. You're inside my heart. We're going to be brave, aren't we? I tell you what. Let's pretend we're back in India. And I'm going away with the troop for a few days, shall we? <sighs> We've fought this kind of battle before, haven't we? And you never cried once when I went away. Remember? Yes, Daddy. Well, this is going to be our hardest battle. But we'll be good soldiers, won't we? Yes, Daddy. Shall we say goodbye, like we used to at home? Yes, Daddy. All right, then. Chin up. Go to the window and, and look out. Oh, say it as we used to. My Daddy has to go away. But he'll return most any day. Any moment I may see my daddy coming back to me. My daddy has to go away. But he'll return most any day. Any... <laughs> such good soldiers as we thought. Oh, yes, we are. I can do it now. My daddy has to go away. But he'll return most any day. Any moment I may see my daddy coming back to me. of a war. 
You'll be the enemy, and you'll be my trusty lance. Now, ready, aim, fire! Oh. Ouch! I guess we'll have to call in the reserves. So long, Coop Mouth and High. Good morning. Mrs. Saab speaks Hindustani. I've lived in India all my life. You will lie at Bob Sertai. Ah, Sabdunya se achai. Mrs. Saab is going to live in England now? Only until my father gets through making the boars behave. Mrs. Saab is then a soldier? Yes, my father's a captain. Captain Crew. I'm Sarah. What is your name? I am Randas. Servant to the Honorable Lord Wickham and to her ladyship, Rani. Ah! Randas! Randas! Yes, sir. Why the deuce are you dawdling here? Finish with that burn and get on with your work. Good morning. How do you do? I'll be here at the window most every morning in case you want to talk about India. Good morning, Sarah. Oh, good morning. Ready for breakfast, dear? Well, I'm trying to be, but I don't seem to be very good at these buttons. My thumb gets lost in the holes. Yeah, let me help you. Buttons are a bother, aren't they? I never had a button thing before, but I'll learn. I'm sure you will. Here, put your shoe up. Come in. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. Is the young lady any boots to put on? Well, for the pair I wore yesterday, I'll get them. I'll get them, miss. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss. Are you hurt? No, miss. You mustn't be up on them, miss. Just hold out your arms and I'll pile them on. Oh, no, miss. If Miss Minton was to see. You think you can hold two more? Yes, miss. There we are. Are you all right? <laughs> You take care of all wounds. Yes, miss. And she does them beautifully. Ah, oh, thanks, you, miss. Thank you for doing my shoes. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Goodbye, Becky. Goodbye. Bye. Well, perhaps this isn't going to be such a bad school after all with you and Becky here. Hmm. Oh, we'll have to hurry, dear. This mansion doesn't like anyone to be late. Tell me, Miss Rose. Do you think Miss Minton could be as cross as she looks? What will I have to do today? Well, after breakfast, you'll have a class in arithmetic. Arithmetic? Then English, then French, then one in elocution and deportment, history and geography. Phew! I'm going to be a busy person, aren't I? When do I get to ride my pony? Later this afternoon, about four o'clock. Oh. Children, our new pupil, Sarah Crew, will be down presently. As you've seen, Captain Crewe is a very delightful man, and their family is most distinguished. I shall expect you to treat her accordingly. Now, you may take your places. Good morning. Ah, oh, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. I'm so happy you feel like joining us this morning. Did you sleep well? No, I didn't, thank you. <laughs> Come, dear. Lavinia, you and Jessie will move down one place. Sarah will be seated at my right after this. Why, Miss Mitchin, this has always been my place. Lavinia. For this food and all the bountiful gifts bestowed upon us, we are duly grateful and do now give thanks. Why are you putting salt on your plate, dear? Just in case you should ask me to have one of your eggs. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jeffrey, will I saddle the pony for the wee lassie? I think not, Sandy. We'd best use the mare for her first few lessons. Very good, sir. Come on, lad. Hello there. Hello, Jeffrey. What luck. The old girl allowed you to come out. Sarah, this is Mr. Jeffrey Hamilton. Little Miss Cruz, our new pupil. How do you do? How do you do? I believe I'm to teach you to ride. Teach me? And that means two bob a day extra for me. Oh. Is two 
you, Bob, a great deal of money? <laughs> Value's a comparative. In my present state, it's a fortune. Well, in that case, I guess I better be taught. <laughs> <laughs> Is my pony ready? I think we'd best start you out on something a little tamer, huh? Oh. Then hadn't I better explain things to my pony? He might feel hurt. Right you are. Ponies are very sensitive creatures. Explain the whole thing to him thoroughly. He's right there by the arch. It, uh, it may take me some time. That's quite all right. We'll wait here in the tack room. All right. Oh, General. <laughs> are you glad to see me? <laughs> well, Mr. Jeffrey's going to give me something tamer than you. I'm afraid it isn't going to be much of a ride. Rose, something's wrong. What is it? Miss Manchin's taken away my Thursday afternoons. But why? We must have been seen together. Well, does that mean that I can never see you alone again? Oh, of course not, darling. No matter what Miss Manchin says, we'll find a way. Well, I can't understand the woman. What is she afraid of? Why shouldn't we see one another? Gossip, I suppose. She only lives for that school and her ideas of propriety and snobbishness. Fiddlesticks. She's afraid of losing an excellent teacher whom she gets for nothing. I won't stand for it. I'll have a talk with her myself. Oh, no, darling, you mustn't do that. She don't want to discharge us both. She may not have the chance if things continue to pop in South Africa. You mean you might go? Wouldn't you want me to, if they called for volunteers? Of course, darling. You'd have to. Oh, Jeffrey. There's nothing to worry about now, dear. This poor rumpus will never get that serious. See, my child, we shall see. If she don't hear from her father ever so often, her eyes get that sad. It hurts me to look on him. Have no fear, little one. There's a letter for her this time. Oh, I'm that glad, sir. Mrs. Takes his top that off. Yeah, the very gentleman he was. Oh, what a, a cheer. Oh, yeah. oh, the night is cried. Oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna meet Bill. Have you bought the street, Bill? Love, 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 Not behaving quite as he expected, and he may not get here in time for my birthday. But that's months off. So many things may happen before then. He may still come, you know. I am writing Miss Minchin to give you a birthday party such as I should give you if I were there. You are to go on a regular spree, buy anything and everything your heart desires. Now, last and most important of all, my darling. I want you to pause at exactly two o'clock on your birthday. Close your eyes and send me a kiss, for my eyes also will be closed, and I will be giving you a kiss, too. Isn't he the most wonderful man in all the world? With one exception. Well... Mr. Jeffrey is very nice. What's that? Who are they, Miss Rose? They're the volunteers. going to sell that 
Africa too? Yes, dear. They're going to the relief of our poor soldiers at Mafeking. Is something the matter with our soldiers at Mafeking? The Boers had them all cut off. And we've been unable to break through their lines to get help to them. They're sick and hungry, dear, and desperate. They're holding out like true British soldiers. Darling, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Oh, Miss Rose. Oh, shh. <laughs> Darling, you mustn't cry. I'm sure you'll be all right. Good afternoon, Mr. Jeffrey. Good afternoon, Martha. Is Miss Sarah ready for her ride? Yes, sir. She'll be down presently. Thanks. Oh, are we all ready? Hello, Jeffrey. The two most beautiful ladies in the world. Well, you're not in your riding things. Oh, I can't go today. Oh, the guard needs extra tutoring. Oh, will it take all afternoon? I'm afraid so. I have to stay with her till she can spell Constantinople. Good heavens, that may take months. <laughs> you leave that to me. So we go. Have you been crying? But you have. There are still tears in your eyes. It's just this London fog. Oh, well, if that's all, let's be off, shall we? Today. Not at all, dear. But may I ask why not? I'd like to talk to you. All right. It's about Martha King. Are the soldiers really starving and sick and cut off from everything? You see, my father's there, and I've got to know. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. Our men aren't having an easy time of it, it's true. But they're holding out. And we're sending fresh troops every day, you know. Why, they'll be relieving Martha King in no time at all now. It's getting harder every day to pretend my father's safe. Don't you worry. See here, I'll let you in on a little secret. I enlisted today, and while I don't want Miss Rose to know quite yet, I'll be going over there shortly myself. To Mafeking? And perhaps you can help my father. Rather. We'll get him out. What the blazes are you doing here? Hello. How some of you impudent puppy? What are you doing here? Don't be frightened, Sarah. It's only my grandfather. Don't you believe him, young woman. I disowned him the day he was born. And we're really very fond of each of other. Of course we are. What? <laughs> we're nothing of the kind. As a favor to me, will you please stop shouting at my best paying pupil? Pupil? Paying? What, the, what are you talking about? I am master of the horse in this exclusive seminary for young ladies. You, you, you take advantage of my absence to become a riding master? And next door to my own house? Where's your family pride, boy? Well, so one must eat, and family pride is a pretty thin diet. Oh, blackmail, eh? You think I'll buy you off? I hadn't thought of that, but it's not a bad idea. Well, I'll see your hand drawn and quartered first. Wait till I see the woman who runs this school. I'll put a spoke in your wheel. Do. She'd love to know my grandfather is Lord Wickham. She'll probably raise my salary. Ah. They have finished, Mrs. Arvin. Lord Wickham is coming. Then I'm going. Ah, impudent young pup. Just like his father. Riding master. <laughs> Maybe you're fond of him, but I don't think he's very fond of you. Oh, he's harmless. <laughs> his bark's worse than his bike. I should hope so. Why is he so mad at you? Oh, he isn't really. He was angry with my father. I was mixed up in their quarrel. What he really wants is to have me come begging to him for help. He'd be eating out of my hand if I would. I don't think I'd care to have me eating out of my hand. How would you like to have me eating out of your hand? You? Oh, that would be different. Well, I shall. If you'll do me a favor. A very important one. Oh, could I? I've got an idea that you're the only one in the world who could. I want you to get Miss Rose to go shopping with you next Wednesday. Shopping? Well, shopping's as good an excuse as any for Miss Minchin. Now, listen. Really? To Miss Rose? She said she would? That's wonderful. No, not a soul. Not even Emily. Good girl. Now I've got to go. I must do some preliminary shopping. You don't have to tell me what for. Something gold and shiny. All right, you <laughs> are. <laughs> Good 
Come in. What do you want? I'm very busy. Miss Minchin, I wanted to ask you something. Oh, it's you. What do you want, dear? I'm going to ask you a big favor. Yes? Mr. Jeffrey's leaving the day for the war. He's been so very nice to me. I thought I ought to fill my social obligations by doing something for him. That's what you teach us, isn't it? When someone shows you a kindness, you show them one in return? Well, doing something for Mr. Jeffrey scarcely comes under the rules of social obligations. But what is it you want to do for him? May I have him for tea? Here, at the school. Oh, couldn't I please, since he's going away to war? Well, I suppose it would be permissible, since he was one of the teachers. You need not mention it to the other young ladies, however. No, Miss Minchin. Thank you, Miss Minchin. Oh, thank you, Miss Minchin. We must teach something. After all the trouble little Sarah's gone to. I think she'll understand. You've forgotten your ring. No, I haven't. See? I'm always afraid I'll forget and wear it in front of his mansion. I did yesterday, and fortunately for us, she didn't see it. How I'd love to tell the old girl. We can't do that yet, darling. I know. You sorry you married me? As though you didn't know. I only wanted you to tell me again. Darling, I'll be living this last week over every moment that I'm away from you. And we won't be separated, will we? Because I'll be living it over, too. I thought you were having Mr. Hamilton to tea. I am. I mean, I was, but... Who's in that room? Oh, please don't go in there, Miss Minchin. Miss Minchin, Miss Rose and I... We... we were saying goodbye, Miss Minchin. How dare you risk the reputation of my school in this manner? Nothing's happened that damages your precious school's reputation. As a matter of fact, Miss Rose and I... Jeffrey! For my sake. Oh, please, Miss Minchin. It was all my fault. Silence. Since you are here merely to say goodbye, please do so. Now. Bye, Jeffrey. Bye, Mr. Jeffrey. Bye, dear. Sarah, I shall expect an explanation of this. Yes, Miss Minchin. As soon as I can think of one. been cornered like rats for seven months. I say send more troops to Mathigan if it takes every man in England. I'm with you. No! No! Oh, my boy! My boy! My boy! Oh! They killed my boy! I know soldiers are supposed to stand a lot. And my daddy is a good soldier. But they've waited so long for help. Please do something about Mathigan right away. But they'll all be lost. My daddy won't come back. Oh.
morning. Isn't it great news? <laughs> oh, Miss Rose, they're safe. My daddy and Mr. Jeffrey are safe. What is it? What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Mama King is relieved. <laughs> that Sarah's birthday should fall on a day when we're celebrating a glorious victory for Her Majesty's army. And now, Sarah, will you explain to the children your wishes about your birthday? I'm very happy to have you here. And I thought I would like to give presents today, not just receive them, because I... I wanted to show how grateful I am that my father has been rescued. Quiet, children, quiet. May we do the presents now? Yes, but your gifts first, Sarah. This is from me. Oh, thank you, Miss Midgen. Now all I need is to know how to sew. <laughs> <laughs> and this from the entire school. Here are pictures of your native India. Oh, thank you ever and ever so much. I shouldn't have to pretend nearly so hard when I want to make believe I'm there. <laughs> and now, do you want the others to have their presents? Yes, if you please. They're all over here. And your names are all on them. Here you are, Miss Rose. Oh, how nice. And would you help with the other presents? Of course, dear. And this is for you, Miss Minchin. Oh, how thoughtful, Sarah. And, uh... From one old trooper to another. Me in younger and happier days. When I was better known as Bubbling Bertie. Oh, thank you. We'd better keep this present a secret. Mum's the word. I should say it is. <coughs> Here, this is from me. Thank you. Hope you like it. Why, it's just what I wanted. Mom's the word, you know. Rather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, miss. Oh. Here's my present, miss. It ain't so very good. Oh, thank you, Becky. It ain't nothing but flannel, miss. And the flannel ain't so very new. Oh, dear Becky, you made it all yourself. Yes, miss. I made it at night. I knew you could pretend it was setting with diamond pins stuck in. It's beautiful, Becky. I shall love it. Oh, really, miss? The front lines are very new. And this isn't so very new either. It's my present to you. A present for me, miss? Yes, Becky, with my love. Oh, what is it, miss? It's a scarab from Egypt. My daddy gave it to me because it brings good luck. I'd rather you had it than anyone else I know. Oh, Lomas. I think I'm going to find her. Oh, no, Becky. Not now. I have lots more presents for you, too, in my room. I don't know what to say, Miss. You're sweet, Becky. Yes, yes, very nice. Oh, look at mine, Miss Manchin. Yes. Beg pardon, Miss. Yes, Mr. Barrow of Baron Skipworth is here to see you. Today, I didn't send for him. He seems very much upset about something. He's waiting in your office. Very well, I'll go at once. Miss Rose. The scarf is beautiful. Miss Rose, will you be sure to tell me when it's almost two o'clock? Of course, dear. You know, I have a very special appointment with my daddy. He's going to be thinking of me at exactly two. I'll watch the time. Thank you, Miss Rose. Oh, Sarah, thank you for the handkerchief. They're lovely. Don't you think it's time to cut the cake? Oh, yes, the cake. <laughs> Pray be seated, Mr. Barrow. How much did you advance for this party? Quite a sum, I suspect. What does it matter? Captain Crew is a very wealthy man. His check will be here shortly. No, Miss Mitchin. There'll be no check. What? 
What do you mean by that? The late Captain Crewe. The late Captain Crewe? Captain Crewe is dead. He was so reported in the list this morning. Moreover, he died a bankrupt. Bankrupt? But his property, his mines... His property and his mines were confiscated by the enemy. You mean to tell me that that child is penniless? That she's left on my hands with nothing? She's certainly left penniless, and she's certainly left on your hands. She hasn't a relative in the world that we know of. But her father's account is overdrawn. I was expecting a check in advance, the money for this party. So I understand. But this is monstrous. Now you have to make a wish and blow out all the candles with one breath. My wish is that my father will come back very soon. Now take a big breath. <laughs> I haven't got very good lungs, have I? <laughs> I'll turn her off in the streets. You think that wise, Miss Minchin? The reputation of your school, you know. My school? Well, the report might get about. And it might not sound well to the parents of some of your other pupils. Yes, that is so. Of course. The child could be made to serve in your employ until her indebtedness is worked out. But that would take years. Why so? But at least it's better than nothing. Hurry, children. Your ice cream's melting. <laughs> Sarah, it's almost two o'clock, darling. Thank you, Miss Rose. Oh, Daddy, I am thinking of you. And I know that wherever you are, you're thinking of me, too. Oh, Miss Rose, I felt him with me. I really did. Miss Minchin wants you, dear. Oh, all right. Children, you will leave your gifts here. Why? Where are they going? Why can't they take the presents with them? Because they are not yours to give. But I don't understand. You will later. Go to your room now. But Miss Minchin... Sarah, go to your room. All of you. Now will you tell me what it's all about? What has happened, Miss Minchin? Whatever it is, you might have let her off a bit easier. Silence. Captain Crewe is dead. His name appeared on the list today. He's left the child a pauper. Oh, Miss Minchin. You had better tell her. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. You will do as you are told. Oh, Miss Rose, what's wrong? Why did Miss Minchin stop the party? Sarah. I want to talk to you a minute, dear. Oh, darling. Oh, Miss Rose, what is it? Sarah, you're a soldier's daughter. And you know that that means being brave and courageous, don't you? No matter what happens. Oh, Miss Rose, is it something awful? Your father. But my father's all right. Papa King is relieved. You heard them say so. Help didn't get there soon enough, dear, for him. His name appeared on the list this morning. You mean with the wounded? No, dear. My daddy is... Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry. It can't be. It isn't true. I won't believe it. He isn't dead. He isn't. <laughs> Have you? Yes. You may go. Sarah, you 
you understand, of course, that these rooms can no longer be yours. Come with me. This is to be your room in the future. I shall have to sell your furnishings and your clothes to pay part of the debt your father owed. Ordinarily, you would go to a charitable institution. But I'm going to let you remain here. There will be duties for you to perform, of course. I hope you appreciate my kindness in not sending you away. I was unable to find a black dress among your things. So one of the girls has given you this. You better take off that party frock and put this on. I'll send up some shoes. I don't believe it. I don't. I don't! My daddy has to go away. But he'll return most any day. Any moment I may see. My daddy coming back to me. And Miss Minchin's gonna sell all her things. It was beastly having to give back our presents. How do you feel now about your little princess? Oh, Miss. Is there anything I can do? No, Becky. Thank you. Sarah, from now on, you are not to sit with us. Return to your room and smooth down those curls. Then go to the kitchen. Run along now. Girls, Lavinia, you may take your old place beside me. The missus had sent you down to me, has she? Miss Minchin said I am to have my breakfast here. You'll do more than eat your breakfast if you work for that one. I, uh, I should be glad to help. You will, eh? Look at you! Look what you're doing! For that you'll get no breakfast. Min, you better make some more toast for the missus. Not sure. Coming up. Here's your breakfast. Take it over there. We don't associate with royalty. <laughs> Let me wait on you, miss. No, you don't. She can wait on herself. You can sit there and watch her eat. Perhaps that'll teach you a lesson. Please, Mrs. O'Connell, may I give my breakfast to Becky? I'm not hungry this morning. Give it to the cat if you like, and get to work. Wash them dishes. No, miss. Oh, I don't want it. just came.
Miss Rose? I'll take the mail, if you please. My darling girl, I have been half mad trying to find a way out for you since your letter reached me. But it has come. My grandfather has relented. I pray him that this money and my love will help you bear what lies ahead. Jeffrey. You say this girl's a teacher at your school? She was, until I discharged her today. We're not likely to hear from her again. And I was prepared to turn over a handsome sum to that boy when he got back. He even made an ass of myself and sent him a check. Then I was right to withhold this. He made it over to her. You're not very fond of the girl, are you? Hardly, under the circumstances. You're sure the girl has no legitimate claims on him? I brought her up from a foundling. Is it likely she would not have consulted me if their love had been respectable? Brandas! Yes, sir. In future, if any letters or cables come from Mr. Jeffrey, they're to be returned unopened. As you wish, sir. Yes. It's one of them lonely nights. Yes. I wonder where Miss Rose is. I shall miss her terribly. We're all alone in the world now, aren't we, Miss? No. No, we're not alone. There's my father, you know. Your father? But, but Cook says he... You mustn't say that. It isn't true. He's not dead. He's sick or wanted somewhere. He'd send for me. But he's not dead. How do you know, miss? Something inside tells me so. And sometimes I hear him calling for me. Oh, no, miss. Oh, don't rob the children of the sunshine. They won't be children love. You! You're smoking. As you see, today, my good woman, the British Army is behind me. That uniform. You're not going to war. Quite. To the very cannon's mouth, if need be. But why? Because, old girl, I'm fed to the teeth with your bullying. And your treatment of Rose and little Sarah is the last straw. I prefer the less painful horrors of the battlefield. Are you daring to criticize me? Astonishing, isn't it? But it proves that I'm competent to lead my men into the very jaws of death. After this, you may never expect help from me again. I am quite calm. For if the bloodthirsty boar spares me, the footlights will see bubbling Bertie once again. Hubert, you wouldn't do that to me. Oh, wouldn't I? Well, ta ta, old girl. Yes, Lassie. Were you at the siege of Mafeking? Aye. That's what I stopped the bullet that stopped me. Then did you know my father? Your father? What might his name be, Lassie? Captain Reginald Crewe. Your father a captain? Yes. They say he is dead, but I know it can't be. And I've asked so many soldiers about him, I hope you could tell me. No, Lassie. I'm sorry, I can't. Why don't you ask in the hospital there? Maybe they'll have some record of him. Thank you, sir. I will. The little princesses I live. It's Mr. Bertie. In person. But I thought you'd gone to war. No. Lord Roberts wanted me to, of course. 
But he said, Bertie, old boy, the wounded need you. So you stay here and cheer up the brave lads who have fallen in our just cause. So I'm uh, practically in command of this hospital. Oh, Mr. Bertie, could my father be in there? Your father, Princess? Yes. You see, I know he isn't dead. And I've been looking and looking. He could be among the wounded, couldn't he? Yes. I'm almost sure he is, somewhere. If you're in charge, could I please look for him in there? Well, uh... Please. Yes, yes, of course you may. Things like that can happen, you know. Here. Well, uh, discipline in a hospital is rather, uh, lax. Oh. Oh, I say, Major, they're waiting for you in Ward B. There's a lot of trash up there. Uh, very good. I'll get one of my men to attend to it. Get one of your what? Well, 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 two of my men, then. Carry on. Over there, sir. What's this tight doing here before pisting hours? Well, you see, sir, that... Well, well, well. If you please, sir, the Major's helped me to find my father, sir. The, the Major? To her, sir. You see, we're old friends, sir. I knew her father, Captain Crewe, who's reported killed at Mafeking. The child's sure there's some mistake, so I'm helping her search among the wounded. Could you tell me anything about my father, sir? <sighs> Sorry, my dear, I can't. Carry on, Major. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This little girl's father's being killed, but she insists he's alive, so I'm letting her look around. Try another ward. There's old Bertie. Give us a song, lad. Attention, men. Attention. Official inspection. He isn't here either. But someone might know about him. If you please, sir, were you at the siege of Mafeking? I was that, darling. It's where I picked up the bug. It was no bigger than the seed of a thistle down that laid me low. Ah, the bugs down there are worse than their bullets. Then perhaps you didn't know my father. Faith, and I wouldn't have known my own father <coughs> with the fever that was on me. Thank you, sir. It's all right, darling. Hello. If you please, sir, were you with the troops at Mafeking? Yes, yes, of course I was. That's where I ran away, you know. Then did you know my father, Captain Crewe? Yes, yes, of course. That's a fine-looking officer, isn't he? He ought to do well. But where did you see my father last? Where is he now? Where's who? My father. Oh, one soldier more or less doesn't make any difference, you know. I'm making thousands and thousands for England. See? Fine, strong fellows who won't be afraid as I was. I was afraid of the noise. That's why I ran away, you know. He said he knows my father, but he won't tell. He's living in a dream, Sarah. He doesn't know what he's saying. Come on, dear. Don't go yet, lad. Give us a song. Yes, give us a song, Bertie. How about it, dear? Shall we sing them a song to cheer them up? Our old specialty, what? Not today, Mr. Bertie. Oh, come on, darling. Let's try and forget our own troubles and do something for these lads, shall we? All right. I'll try. Oh, you darling. What about the old Kent Road? That's the one. Mackie will play it for you. I'll be good at it, Mac. Every evening at the stroke of pardon me, and the missus takes a little rod, you sigh. Oh, wonderful, they're still alive. If you saw that little donkey go, when we start the blessed donkey shops, he won't move, so I quickly ops. Pals start a wagon, and when down he drops, I'm a 
Daddy was mine to go. A warm jug and key. I shouldn't run away too often, Princess. You might get punished, you know. I'll keep a sharp lookout whenever the wounded come in. You don't really believe he'll ever come, do you? Yes, yes, of course I do. I told you, missing men often turn up. Then I'd better come. You might not know him if you were very much changed. All right, dear. You come. Goodbye, Mr. Birdie. Goodbye, dear. Little Mrs. Sal. Good morning, Granddad. Feeding your little friends? Yes, but I couldn't feed them very much for my supper last night. Oh, it is difficult for them when the snow comes. <coughs> Ronnie! Ronnie! Oh, Ranny! 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 You look as though you know you're being naughty and enjoying it. Ronnie! <laughs> Ronnie! For shame! Here she is on the bookshelves. Bookshelves? Oh, I forgot. I pretend they're bookshelves and filled with beautiful books. Then I'd better remove her before she ruins your set of Dickens. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is your, uh, your room, Mrs. Sam? Yes. It's so little and so high above everything <coughs> that it's almost like a nest in a tree. I can lie on my soft sofa and look up in the sky through that little window on the roof. Sofa? It looks more like a soft sofa when it's made up. And you imagine it has down quilts and lovely cushions to curl up on. There is a fire sometimes, of course. Well, that is the hardest of all to imagine, especially at night. But it's lovely when you can. The grate shines so when it's polished, and the nice, bright, cool scuttle on the hearth. Oh, worry, well, miss. The cook on chair and she's in an awful steel. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me if I run. I've got to go to the butcher's. I'll get my ears boxed if I don't hurry. Yes, Mrs. Sub. Listen to this. Hospital ship Mercy arrives. 1,200 wounded disembarked. Does it give any of the names? There ain't no list. Oh, I hope my poor air is among them. A wounded husband is better than no husband at all, eh, Min? <laughs> oh, Becky, I've got to get to the hospital before 9 o'clock when they close the visitors. Somehow I've got to. Yes, Miss. <laughs> You clumsy ox. For that, you whistle for your supper. Oh, Mom, trying to had no lunch. You put things away before she got back from the grocers. Who oh, do you think you're talking to? You'll both go hungry. Now, clean up this mess. Go on, get on with it. Some sorry cases in this batch, Doctor. Yes, poor devils. Uh, oh, Doctor. Doctor, this man is an unknown. His papers were lost. Delirium following malarial fever. We're very much concerned about him, sir. Anemia, heart action weak, respiration low. All that's to be expected. But his mind doesn't clear, sir. He has no lucid moments. Hmm. Temporary paralysis of some nerve center. Or a blood clot, possibly. More likely to be the latter, sir. He received a nasty head wound. Sir. Sir. He repeatedly calls for this person, Sarah. You can't learn who this Sarah is? No way of finding out, sir. Till his identity is established. Sir. Sir. Yeah, but 
better go now, miss. I'll finish up for you. Thank you, Becky. I'll have to fly. Yes, miss. Here, old your horses. Where do you think you're going? Why, uh, 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 Miss Lavinia wants some coal for her fire. Up to it. Oh, Sarah, you look so tired. And you look hungry, too. Are you actually hungry, Sarah? Yes, I am hungry. I'm so hungry I can eat you. My father pays for it. Just a moment. Our princess seems to be in a hurry. Could it be that she's going to a ball? Come back here and clean up that hearth. I'd like my shawl, the pink one. It's on my bed. Please, I find the room a bit chilly. Princess, what are you doing out so late? I've come to see the new soldiers and guests here today. Not tonight, my girl. It's closing time. But I've got to. I ran away specially. Now then, young, and take it easy. Please let me in. I'm sure he's here this time. You're sure every time, Princess. I'm sorry. You run on home and come back tomorrow morning. That's a good little girl. All right, good night now. He will recover from the effects of the fever, but I am convinced there is brain pressure. You advise an operation then? Yes. Do you agree? I do. And Dr. McNeish in Edinburgh is the man. Yes, splendid, splendid. List this man for removal to Edinburgh in the morning. Yes, Doctor. You've been out, haven't you? Yes, Miss Minchin. What do you mean by disobeying my orders? I had to. I had to look for my father. This ridiculous search for your father. All this making believe and refusing to face facts. It's... it's indecent. I've had enough of it. You must realize once and for all that your father is dead. Don't you say that. He's not dead. He's not! And you can't stop me from looking for him, either. How dare you speak to me in that manner, you impudent little... I'll attend to you further in the morning. I can't be a good soldier much longer. I'm cold, and I'm hungry, too. Do you hear? No, you don't hear. You don't hear, and you don't care. You're nothing but a doll. A doll! You never had hard to make you feel. You're just a doll! <laughs>
Your Highness, please forgive me, but something has gone amiss. There is an angry woman outside to report a stolen kiss. Tell her she must go away. Come around some other day. I have told her, but she won't. You must see her. If you don't, she'll scream her head off. Tell her to hush. She won't be hushed. Then tell her to shush. I am afraid she won't be shushed. I won't be shushed. I won't be hushed. I know my rights. I know the law. And I know also what I saw. What did you see? I saw him. You saw who? I mean, whom? I saw that lad steal a kiss from that shameless little miss. Don't be fooled by all their shyness. They're a wicked pair, your highness. There's a law, I understand, against kissing in this land. There is a law that reads like this. No one is to steal a kiss. Ah, but princess, I have a feeling this is not a case of stealing. Silence, fool. I know the law. What I say, I saw, I saw. What I saw... His honor seesaw. I saw, you saw, he saw, she saw. Honor seesaw, honor seesaw. I saw, you saw, he saw, she saw. What she tells us may be true. And if it is, what can we do? If you ask me, we should listen to the lad who did the kissing. I object would not be wise. He would only tell you lies. Let him speak. Come, lad, this way. Now then, what have you to say? Please, Your Highness, I confess, when I saw such loveliness, it was too much to resist. I just thought she should be kissed. So I kissed her. Kissed her twice. It was very, very nice. So he kissed her. Kissed her twice. It was very very nice. There, you see, he broke the law. What I say, I saw, I saw. Please don't start all that again. But he stole a kiss, that's plain. Yes, it looks as if it's true. And I'll have to punish you. No, please. Let me say a word. It is not the way you heard. Please. He did not steal the kiss. I gave it to him. Just like this. There, you see, I had a feeling this was not a case of stealing. I'm not sure. It's not quite plain. Could I see that kiss again? You were right. I have a feeling this was not a case of stealing. Right. The law has been abused. This lad has falsely been accused. He is hers and she is hisn. That old witch should go to prison. You're a very wicked woman. Princess, I am only human. Listen to the old grandmommy. You're a nasty peeping Tommy. Banish her from here forever. Never show your face here, never. Banish her from here forever. Never show your face here, never. What I say, I saw, I saw. I know my rights, I know the law. Come and sit beside me here. Your kiss has made things very clear. Thank you, Princess. Don't thank me. It was that kiss that set you free. Now we are through with this arraignment. Let us have some entertainment. Bring the dancers, bring the singers, bring, bring the, the good old welting ringers. <laughs>
Waked up. Must be dreaming. If the little Mrs. Saab knew, she would be over here to thank you. I don't want to know. Who wants any thanks? Oh, Miss, you're beautiful. Thank you, Becky. Now let's try this one on you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Oh, yes, Miss. It's perfect. And real fitting, too. Mm -hmm. Let's try the slippers and see if they're real. <laughs> Do they feel like slippers to you? They feel soft and warm. This feels soft and warm, too. They're as real as we are. I don't believe it's a dream after all. Do you suppose the food is real, miss? Let's see. I can smell kippers, can you? <gasps> kippers is all I live. I wonder what this is. Muffins! This tastes like a muffin. Is it one? A muffin that's ever wore. It must be the matching, Miss. And we better be quick before it melts away. <laughs> what sort of a night did he pass? He rested comfortably, Doctor. Will we be able to send him with the others? Oh, yes. He'll stand the journey all right. Get him ready to be sent with Group D. They'll be leaving in about an hour. Very well, Doctor. to offer her a chocolate. You might let her smell them. Miss Midgen surely couldn't object to that. Would you care to? I don't want to smell them, and I don't want to eat them, thank you. You don't? Why not? I've had much nicer things than chocolate this morning. <gasps> Listen to the princess pretending again. I'm not pretending. I had the most wonderful things to eat that anyone ever had. Why, you little liar. You haven't even had breakfast. Pardon me, but I really have. And if you'll excuse me for saying so, it isn't polite to call people liars. How dare you talk back to me? Was I doing that? My goodness! Oh! Oh! So sorry! Oh! <laughs> you wait till I dump this mention on you! Oh! <laughs> well, can he still hear, Becky? Yes, Miss. Thank heaven it stopped raining. Are you going someplace, miss? To the hospital. Oh, Becky, perhaps everything is going to change for us. Perhaps I'll find my father this time and he'll take us away from here. Oh, Lord. It's, it's the missus. Sarah, how dare you? Why, why, what's happened to this room? That's what we would like to know. When I woke up this morning, here everything was, even to the food and the fire. Where did you get these things? I don't know. Let us be 
because I dreamed such a beautiful dream last night that it came true. But these articles are rare and costly. You stole them, didn't you? Oh, no, Miss Minchin. We didn't take these things. I'll give you one more chance to tell me the truth. But I am telling you the truth. They just came. They did indeed, Mum. You go to your room. This is a matter for the police. Oh, please, Miss Minchin. Please don't call the police. Of course I'll call them. Oh, Miss Minchin. Sure enough, miss. And the police coming, too. I can't be arrested. There's no wounded men at the hospital, and I've got to get there. I don't see all you can, miss. And us locked in. Come on, Becky, quick. Where are we going, miss? Follow me. Oh, I'm back for it, miss. I'm praying, too. This time, Becky, come on, give me your hand. Look out. Oh, hello, miss. Don't be afraid, Becky. What game is this, little Mrs. Sound? May we please go through your house? We're running away from the police. And a very nice game, too. Will you enter? We'd like you very much indeed. You seem in great haste, Mrs. Sound. Could you not stop for a cup of tea? Oh, thank you. We're in too big a hurry. I see. Still playing the game of the police. I hope you escaped them safely, Mrs. Sarge. Oh, why? Oh, no, Miss. Please. There they are. Stop them. Oh, Becky, run, run. You were in the traffic, Mum. I couldn't find her anywhere. Do you know where she's likely to be? I do. Cabby? Whoa. Harvard Hospital, in a hurry, please. Sarah. Sarah. He never stops calling for her. a little bit, will you? Thanks. Ah, ah, ah. You can't go in there. No visitors allowed for an hour. But that might be too late. Now run along, little girl, will you? There's a good little girl. I'm sorry, sir. No visitors allowed for an hour. But we must go in. Sorry, sir. You can stand over there if that's all right. just went through the hall, nurse. You're sorry, youngin, you can't go upstairs now. I've got you. I've got to see if my father's here before Miss Minton catches me. Now run along now. Do as you're told. Here, I say that. Come back here. You can't go up there. You know, you've been in trouble. I'll come back here. You can't come in here. You can't come in here. Come on. Let me go. Let me go. I will to be here. I will. I will. Order this. What is it the child wants? Oh, please. Please don't let him take me away. What is it, child? My father. They said he was killed at Math King, but I don't believe it. He may be here with the new wounded men. They won't let me look. And if they don't, perhaps I'll never have another chance. Can't you make them let me look? Colonel, will you please see that this child is escorted through the wards? With uh, permission, I shall accompany her personally, Your Majesty. What is your name? 
Victoria, what is yours? Sarah. Oh, Your Majesty. Colonel. I hope you will find your father, my dear. A thorough search, Colonel. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Have you been through any of the wars yet? Not today, sir. I think we'd better cover this wing first. Searching for a patient. Yes, sir. Go right along, dear. All right. Thank you, darling. Miss Rose. Sarah, darling. Sarah. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Jeffrey, you're home. You're back again. Now you can tell me where my daddy is. Well, Jeffrey didn't get as far as Mafeking did. Then you don't know? You didn't even see it? No, dear. I didn't. I'm sorry. Have you found him? Oh, no, sir. This is my friend, Mr. Jeffrey, and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton. Well, how do you do? I'm afraid I can't introduce you because I don't know your name. <laughs> Colonel Gordon. This is Colonel Gordon. He's helped me to search the hospital. Uh, don't bother. How do you do, sir? I'm very happy to know you both. From Mafeking? No, sir. An army mule. And a British mule at that. <laughs> That's adding insult to injury. <laughs> Sorry, sir. It's time for the patient's drops. Oh, I'd rather face that mule. <laughs> I'll come back later, Miss Rose. Just as soon as I've gone through the other wards. I'll wait for you, dear. Uh, goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Be sure to come back, Sarah. I will. Poor little thing. She'll never stop hoping. I insist that you send for my brother. Very well, Mum, but you can't get in, brother or no brother. We will get in. My brother will see to that. I hope you're right, Mum. Now, this man will have to wait for the next ambulance. All right. I think you'd better take him into the waiting room. These halls are much too drafty. I think I'd better. I'm very sorry you couldn't find your father. Thank you, just the same, sir. He may be on the next convoy of wounded. I wouldn't give up hope. I won't, sir. So goodbye, God bless. They were stolen. Sarah, steal preposterous. I have proof and I intend to turn her over to the authorities. She's in this hospital and I intend to find her. Now look here, you... I insist that every room be searched. You 
mustn't cry. We must be good soldiers, you know. But I have been a good soldier, Daddy. And you don't know me. My little Sarah never cries. But I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Sarah. Sarah. My baby. Oh, Daddy. You oh, my do darling. Know me. Sarah, my darling. You know me. My baby, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, oh Sarah, my darling. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Amanda. Then how do you account for those silk coverlets, those robes, and other things that are there? Perhaps a little bird brought them in. Perhaps they grew legs and walked in. I don't know. All I do know is that little Sarah wouldn't steal. Bertie. Yes? Bertie, what do you think has happened? The little princess has found her father. She's found him. Captain True is alive? Of course he's alive. How could she find him if he wasn't alive? Oh, Mr. Bertie, I found my father. Darling, I'm so glad. Thank <laughs> you.